one of the latest things we've invented is a PRC chain guide. A lot of racers are tired of running the big old gear guards that go on the side of the gears because they create a lot of weight, they get bent, they get worn, they're aggravating to the change the gears with. So we pulled out something from the past which was a which was a block, which was a guide that we used to conventionally, back years ago, we used to bolt it to the frame. But now we've come up with a neat system where it actually bolts to the motor mount so it moves with the motor, we can get it located closer to the rear gear. And I want to take a few minutes to show you how to properly put these on because any time that anybody's had any questions about them, They've always been a, a, a problem with the way they've had them put on. So once you get them put on, you get them adjusted where they're, where they're uh, properly aligned. These things are basically maintenance free. So we're going to take a few minutes to show you how to do it. The first thing you need to do is you need to determine whether you're going to run flathead or animal, whether you're running a 15 or a 7 degree mount. That's the reason we have the two holes in them. If you're running a 15 degree mount, you want to use the bottom hole. And if you're running an animal with, say, a flathead, I mean, excuse me, an animal with a 7 degree mount, you want to run it in the top hole. So for this one here, as you can see, we got a, a flat head on this one, so we're going to bolt this one in the bottom hole. The different holes just accommodate the different angle of the motor mount. Because with a, because with a flat head, you have to run those on approximately a 15 degree mount, which allows the back of the tank to clear the tire. So what that does is it raises the back of the motor, so therefore we have to drop the block down. That's the reason it's in a lower hole. Um, where an animal, that has the same crank location, we run it flatter to get the bowl of the carburetor level. So, what, so with those, we have to move the hole up, which gets the block up. And what you're trying to do is just trying to keep the chain running through approximately the center of the block. It's slotted so you can change different gear sizes so you don't have to move the block every time, but you really don't want your chain to be running in the very top or the very bottom. That's the reason we have two different holes in it. Okay, we're going to be putting this one together on, for a flat head. We're going to put it on a 15 degree mega mount. Now the PRC chain guide will work on other mounts besides a mega mount, but most other mounts that are configured like the mega mount will work perfectly. If you're using an old two-piece mount, um, it, I mean it will not work. But if you got a mount that's got a base and a top plate like this, it will probably work. If you notice, there's a slot in this. The slot is so once it's mounted under the motor mount, it can be adjusted to to the clutch that you're running. If you're running spacers or anything behind the clutch, you can adjust it. Basically, what you do. It's best, to, it's best to install it with the motor mount off the go-kart. You can reach under there and put it on afterwards, but it's kind of choresome. So what we do is we just take the back bolt out. You can notice this is the back bolt that holds the plate to the mega mount, or from the, the, plate, the top plate to the base plate. You take the, rear, you take the rear nut off, and you just simply place the bracket to the drive side of the motor mount. Okay, after we got this nut reinstalled, we want to just adjust the bracket so that it's about an eighth to a quarter of an inch from this inside edge of this bracket to the edge of, the, of your top plate. And get it there, make sure that it's parallel. You want to just eyeball it, it'll, it'll make the, the final um, alignment over here a lot easier. And then we just want to barely snug this nut. And we'll tighten it up more later, but there's no need to tighten it down because we're going to have to adjust this side to side and twist it and all to get it in line with the chain once we get it on the go-kart. But for now, just snug it down so it's not flopping around, and it'll be pretty close right where it's at. Okay, we've already got the motor mount and everything placed on the cart just like normal. You want to run your chain through your, uh, through your plastic block, get everything assembled like so, just like normal. Your clutch is on just like you're going to race it. Everything the way you're going to go to the track. Get the gear the way you're going to do it. Everything's loose. We're going to go through how to properly align all this so you won't have trouble at the track. So what I do first, with this still loose, what I do first of all is I just eyeball the chain right quick. I eyeball the rear gear to the front gear. Doesn't have to be perfect, just get it close for now. Snug that down. Now I'm going to align this. I'm going to align the chain guide. All right, snug it down some. Now what I do first of all, that's good, is I snug it enough that I, I have to put some effort to it to move it. Now, you not only want to align it so your chain goes through it, you want to get it parallel to the direction that the chain's running. You don't want this block sitting in here at an angle. And that's a common mistake that they make is, is whenever they put them on, they don't want to get these good and straight. They think that just so the chain goes through it, 
that's good enough. But we want that to be parallel to the chain. And the way I can do that too is I can eyeball this bracket with the inside motor rail. And that one looks pretty good. And you notice it's not hitting. Okay, so that's close enough for now. So now what I want to do is I want to get my rear gear aligned properly to my front to my front sprocket. And the way I do that, I do that a little differently. Some people use lasers and straight edges, but what I do is I set mine based on how the chain runs in the sprocket. So the way I finally line my chain up is I, is, is I turn the, the axle assembly backwards. What this does is this simulates what happens on the bottom side of the gear. So what I do is I spin it backwards and I make sure that the gear is running in the center of the chain. And if it's not, then I'll move the, the sprocket over to whichever side it needs to go to get to the center of the chain. What I do after I eyeball it and get it close, I just, I just take a visual line up to get it close. Then I, I spin it backwards. And the reason I spin it backwards is because you have an axle lead in the back of the cart and the motor is not always square on the motor mount because the, the holes in the bottom of the motor are bigger than the mount. So I turn it backwards to see how the, how the rear gear is tracking in the chain. And you can see the gear is tracking to the right hand side. If you keep spinning it, you notice it's off to the right hand side. So what I do is I need to barely push the gear to the left to get the gear away from the chain. That wasn't enough, go some more. Okay, you can hear it's starting to hit my chain guide, so now I need to move my chain guide over a little bit. So I move it over a little. Okay, now it's running in the center. The sprocket's running in the center of the chain. So what I want to do is I want to tighten that down. Now my rear gear is lined up. That's the way I run, I mean, that's the way I line mine up because what we want to do is we want to make the chain run in the center of the sprocket. It doesn't matter if it, if it looks out of, out of line, as long as the chain is running in the center of the sprocket, that's what you want. You can hear the chain guide's hitting just a little bit. So now what we want to do is align the chain guide up to the chain because the chain is where it's going to run now. We're not going to move the rear gear anymore, it's fixed. Finish snugging the motor down. We want to snug our motor down to make sure it's in the right place too. All right, it's good. All right, so now we've got the block. It's parallel to the frame, which is parallel to the spin to the chain here. We spin it. We don't have anything hitting. Now I'm gonna hold it still. While right. No noise whatsoever. Spins free. And after you run it a time or two, you may want to double check, make sure everything's still the way it was. Usually after you go back and check over it once or twice, after you run it the first, two, first couple of times, shouldn't move, shouldn't have any problem. Whenever you're placing your motor on your cart and you're choosing your chain length, you want to be sure to try to keep your, your, the block of your chain guide approximately two inches from your rear gear. This keeps the gear close enough, I mean this keeps the block close enough to the gear to prevent the chain from coming off, but also allows enough clearance that the chain, I mean that the gear will not hit the block itself. Years ago the pros went away from those old from those old heavy gear guards. They're hard to change gears, they add a lot of weight to the rotating weight of the back of the go-kart, they hurt acceleration off the corner. That's the reason we've all switched over to the new chain guide systems. So be sure when you put yours on your cart to get it properly aligned so that it works proper. You don't have to be messing with it at the racetrack. No grinding, no hitting, no, the chain's not running through it and hitting it real hard. It just needs to keep it in the center of the guide. Get all that put on your cart right, and you're sure to win more races.